Okay, should we do this? Let's hit it. Yeah. I'm ready. Lord, forgive us for what we're about to do to this microphone. Let's Round hit stars it. Only. You are listening to the Bomb Hole. Bomb Hole Podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the Bomb Hole. That bitch is crazy. Okay, Stony Buds, we're back in the booth. How you doing, Buds? I'm doing good, dog. Just so you guys know, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, that little animation that you watched for the intro was made by our guest today, Justin Meyer. How we doing, Justin? We're doing good. Doing good. So uh, my dad's been complaining because he doesn't know if the guests are writers or entrepreneurs or whatever. So for those of you guys who don't know, I'm going to intro Justin. He... Um, Started Videograss, which is a video production company. So he's a filmer, editor, uh, also entrepreneur. He started Death Lens, uh, iPhone fisheye company, and just an overall leyunda, which is Spanish for legend, uh, in the game of snowboarding. <clears throat> so, so Meyer, where are you from originally? I grew up in Las Vegas. Vegas, kid. Wow. Yeah. Grew up uh, running around the strip, kind of being a punk, or what are we talking here? Yeah, kind of the strip, Mo- mostly like uh, north end of the strip, like uh, they call it Naked City. Okay, it's kind of where we like to get in trouble. Which side's the north end uh, of the strip? Like stratosphere, stratosphere, big dog. Right circus, underneath circus. the stratosphere is Naked City. That's Naked City. I don't know what it is. It's probably like gentrified and all upscale now, but back in the day, but that's actually what it's called. Yeah, Naked City was was. I don't know if it's official name. I think it might have just been like. What we called it. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. So I picture you as like this punk kid because you're kind of like, <laughs> you have degrees of eagle, evil to him. Like I yeah. seen him, he's like, a, he's got a family. He's a great, he's a stand-up human being. But then, you know, he, I just saw him stick his gum onto the desk <laughs> like a five-year-old. <laughs> so what did you do in Vegas as a kid? Isn't that like a kind of a fucked up place to grow up? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, looking back. It's not the place to raise your children. <laughs> <laughs> but it, when you're in the moment, you do, it's, it's normal, you know? It's like normal life. But it's I think, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you, you moving to Utah and the, just looking at the billboards and like, what the fuck? Like, Vegas is a fucked up place. Like, it's, it's not a place to raise your kids, I don't think. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I think, like, for us, naturally, like, going out, skateboarding, filming stuff, whatever, we'd have just as much fun getting in trouble and pissing people off and... I don't know. That was that was like a highlight just as much as any other part of filming, mm-hmm. skateboarding or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. And then growing up, hearing about your home life a little bit, sounds like there was like some heavier drinking from your dad or something like that. Yeah. I mean, he he always drank, but he worked, you know, he worked. He wake up 6 a.m. and work till 6 p.m. every day. He worked at a grocery store. And uh, when he would come home straight to the couch, get me a beer. That was kind of his vibe. He would ask you to get him a beer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was my like job. Classic. Yeah. And there was always, like, this fear of, like, oh, man, the house is fucked up. Or, like, oh, there's something. Like, fuck, dad's on his way home. Day's over. Like, yeah. got to get out of here, you know? Like, So is that where yeah. you'd run around at the strip at night because you don't want to be around yep. your dad or some shit like that? Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. brought the family to Vegas? My dad worked for Smith's. It's a grocery uh, store. Yeah. And he started out as a bagger. And then anytime he could get a promotion, we'd move to wherever. Move to Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, and then Vegas by the time I was in third grade. Damn. Yeah. And then ultimately, you migrated from Vegas to Big Bear. Correct? Yeah, yeah. So that's where you met Joe Carlino and started filming. You already, you already filmed at that point, or what was the deal? Yeah, so I moved out to, we'd move out, me and Amber, we've been together for ages, you know, uh, since I was 19. And we lived together since day wow. one. And we'd moved to Big Bear in the, in the winter only because you can't live there in the summer. That place is weird. And we'd moved back to Vegas. back to Be- And so the first year I moved out there, Carlino wasn't out there yet. It was just myself. And I was living with Denise Mazzotti, Clayton Shoemaker. And, like, it was pretty we – were, me and Amber were bunked up in the furnace room in this house that Denise was renting. And Clayton lived there? Yeah, Clayton lived up, like, in the middle level. And then Denise was up top. That's insane. With the kids, with Lenny and Anthony. Wow. Wild. And they were like, they were like fucking six and seven. It was pretty funny. That's crazy. So but, I talked to Carlino before you came and sat down with us. And, you know, I know that you kind of were in like a punk filming, like 
Let's just call it some uh, dipshittery in Vegas. Classic so, dipshittery. Some yeah. dipshittery. It's uh-huh. just some some loose loose action stuff, like kids being punks in Vegas and things along those lines. And then when you move to Bear, Carlino made it sound like you're almost more of an editor than than a film, like a snowboard filmer at that point. Like you had already made. Yeah, so I ne- I could never afford my own camera, so I was always borrowing cameras, you know. Okay. And so I'd borrow like I'd borrow Carlino's camera. Yep. And it's like. We'd, you know, he, I would borrow his camera for a day and I'd make an edit mm-hmm. He'd, and then he would go and he would make an edit and like, we kind of would put them up at the same time. There was like, like, so he was hired by Bear Mountain Yep. to make web videos just for Bear Mountain's website. Yep. And so he, and there wasn't like a, it wasn't like scheduled. I think it was like one a month is all he had to really do, but we did more than that, you know? And like, I would do one sometimes and we'd post it up. He'd do one. Sometimes we'd work on them together. And at one point this is way back when Transworld had the QuickTime players. Do you remember that? Yep. You had to upload the files yeah. straight up. And there was two QuickTime players like in the top right of the screen. And at one point, like Carlino and I had like the f- maybe the second and third video ever posted on that website. Nice. Like, may- I don't know. It was something like that. It was like way back. And, it- and there was not a lot of content out. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. I don't know. So for the listeners that don't know, at that point, like there was, there was no content coming out. On the online, all you had was DVDs. So this is the forefront of the the web video, and you know, fr- from what Carlino told me, you basically came up with the name Sunday in the Park, and created the first kind of viral like thing that people look forward to every week. Um, filming for a web edit, which was a new thing at Bear, correct? Yeah. So at this point, Carlino moved down the hill to work for Transworld. And he's making videos for them, like trick tips and whatnot. And Evan Lefevre got hired on right about the same time, maybe right before Joe. And uh, Evan's like, hey, we should do something. And I'm like, that's exact. I, I'm on. Let's do it. And uh, I think originally I said to Evan, I was like, let's call it Saturday in the Park because it's like that song, you know. Yep. And I was like, oh, it'd be perfect. Like, it's kind of kind of fits in. It'd be funny. And he's like, something about Saturday didn't line up. And he's like, let's go Sunday. Let's call it Sunday in the Park. And and. That's what we did. We just kind of started putting them out every Sunday that that winter. And, and a, those still a star on, was a star right? was born. They still come say. out, right? You know, Pandora's box was opened. <laughs> I'd say um, the original ones have a little bit more, yeah, go time to them with Bradshaw and like we would look forward to those things, man. People like got hyped, like yeah. Yo. I, I think at the time it's because it's all that was out, you know. Like now they're like so good. Like you watch one now compared to the one I made back then. It's like it was so shitty back then, but it was the only thing out, you know. There wasn't really there wasn't anything to follow. There wasn't anything to it was kind of just freestyled, yeah. you know, what it was at the time. So how many winners did you spend in Bear doing that for those guys? Let's see. Lived in Bear for five winners. Maybe six. Yep. Maybe six. And then you did the, there's like the typical uh, filmer, like, steps you take. And it seems like the next one after, like, the local web video is you work at High Cascade. And you right. make their session recap videos, right? So The snowboard camp in Oregon, for those who don't know. Yeah, basically my path is pioneered by Carlino, right? Okay. So Carlino's starting to work for Bear. And then once he left, I worked for Bear. Yep. And then he went to work for Transworld. And I didn't work for Transworld, but... Um, you, you know, like putting, putting content for Transworld, yeah. kind of, essentially, right? And then he went to work. He worked a summer at High Cascade. And then I went to High Cascade the next summer because he was on, moved on, you know? So then... Was he tossing you these jobs or you just were following his No, I was just kind of like, you know, I don't... Like, I had never met Preston. And Preston was at Bear for a Trans Am contest. And mm. Preston was like, you want to come out? Absolutely. Fuck yeah. Me. We moved up there that summer. And I had never been up there. I'd always wanted to be up there as a kid, but could never afford it. Wow. There's like a common theme for mm-hmm. every single person that sits in that seat yeah. that they like went to Mount Hood and their fucking life changed in one way or another. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's yeah. a magical place, man. Yeah. It really is. It's special. You think I mean, it you guys still know that. has that magic or what? It's I don't know. fizzled a little bit. I, only only part because of, me, of maybe current events, but yes. We'll part see. of me felt like the magic left when Preston left, to be honest. That yes. could be true. I but. for those who don't know, Preston was the like the basically the glue that held High Cascade together for our glory years, and then yeah. he, now he owns Crab Grab. And shouts to Preston; he's the <laughs> fucking Props. man. Preston's just a genius, really. I, yeah. I always said that I would always like say to myself, like, 
if I randomly won the lottery and had like a hundred million dollars, I would hire Preston to carry out any ideas that he has <laughs> and see them to fruition. His, because his ideas, not yours. Yeah, yeah, his ideas. Because he's dude, he's got so many ideas. That's so yeah. dope. You know what I think about it? I would do if I had more money than I knew what to do with all the time. This yeah. is my like fantasy. Is like, let's say, let's say like your friend that has like a motorcycle he's super into. Like I would just like pull up with like a giant. Let's say like, I don't know, like bulldozer or something or like something you could drive down the street let's say like a bobcat and i would just like while they're outside i drive up and i just run it over and like smash it and crunch it with a bobcat what a, their motorcycle their motorcycle <laughs> and then take off and then just leave and then i could be really mad and, and then bring them to the dealership and buy a brand new one that's what like you a would brand do. new the nicest one you could buy just anyone who had a dope Any, bike. anybody or like a, even a car let's yeah. say your buddy's truck who he like your buddy's got a tundra you just like Run it over just with something. Just one. destroy it. And then take off and that then buy him great. a brand new one. That sounds awesome. He just got out. His child was in the back seat. Now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I mean, <laughs> that sounds like the premise for an amazing YouTube channel. Yeah, it does. <laughs> if we Give want, him some money. Should we yeah. get a GoFundMe yeah. going? Yeah, yeah let's go. get a GoFundMe go going. Fund. Make that happen. All right, we got off subject, but should we jump into... Seems a little early. Okay, okay, we won't do it. <laughs> I, I get, I get excited, but okay. What, do you, yeah. What do you think we should talk about, buds? Uh, where were we? We were at Bear. So your no, obvious next move was Salt Lake, then. No, so or, or you're in Hood. Where yeah, we're, I mean, I could kind of go into this one. It's yeah. like we're living at Bear, and Amber, my wife, uh, her sisters were kind of in like some heat with her mom, and and uh, they were younger. They were like six and seven at the time. And her mom's just kind of in a rough spot and couldn't really take care of him. She's like, her life's just kind of, kind of wild. And so we were kind of in a position where we needed to take her sisters to live with us because they couldn't live with her mom anymore. But we were living in Big Bear, so we couldn't really do that up there. You know, we couldn't have them up there because they're in school. You can't have them up there six months a year mm. and then come back to Vegas for another six months or, or Vegas for a month and then yeah. go to Hood for three months and then back yep. to Vegas and then back to Big Bear. So... They ended up staying with uh, our good friend, and she took care of them for, like, a few months. And then after that, that winter at Bear was like, I don't think we can do that again. We have to take care of these girls. we got to put them in a spot. We need to take them. You basically and, became their caregivers. Yeah, well, what happened is her mom ended up going to jail for some stuff, and they got taken to CPS, like Child Protective Services. Damn. And so we had to go, go get guardianship of them. Wow. And now we're basically parents. I was like 23 or That's something, insane. you know? So yep. it was like, they don't come with a, an instruction manual. And you how don't old were they? You were 23. They were like nine old. and 10. Wow. Maybe 10 and 11. I think, I don't know. But so we moved, we're like, all right, we're going to, we need to move somewhere else. We need to do something else. And this kind of falls right into starting VG is uh, Nima and I, Nima lived with me like the last year we lived in Big Bear. He rented a room and. And uh, we would always talk. I was always filming, like helping him film his parts for like Neo Proto and people and whatnot. And uh, we would always talk like, ah, we should, we should start our own video. We should start like a, a production company. We should do this. And it was kind of just like bullshit. Like we never. And then that summer he hits me up randomly. He's like, hey, this is the winner. Let's fucking do it. Let's, Let's do it. And it's like, all right, fuck. I need to get the fuck out of Big Bear anyways. And to, you know, I need to put these girls in a better place. And Amber and I are like, we had some family in Salt Lake. We're like, let's move to Salt Lake. And that's perfect place to start it all. And so it kind of just worked out like that. And then, you know, that's kind of where we started VG it was right around that same time. And then I moved out to Salt Lake. How'd you come up with the name video grass? Great name, by the yeah, way. Great name. <laughs> I don't know if it's a great name. It is a great name. <laughs> I is. think, I think, uh, I think it's a great name. It's kind of a funny name. I, Nima came up with it and I think he was kind of on like some radio head vibes at the time. So he oh, wanted radio like, head. He wanted two words that just meant nothing that you put it together. It means something maybe. And I think like, uh, we started it with, I can get into how we how it all started. Cause there's more to than just yeah. Nima, right? Yeah. yeah. So starting VG starts with this phone call from Nima to get it going, and then he was start. They had started Ashbury, and Ashbury was getting going a little bit, and it was with Lance and Mike Hacker, mm -hmm. and uh, so naturally we're like, all right, we got Lance, Mike, Nima, myself, and then we had heard that Mikey and Daryl were going to start Kids Know Again, mm. and we're like, oh shit, well that won't really work out. If we're trying to start basically the same, like the same crew, you know, yeah. like we're trying to get a lot of those guys that in the movie. And uh, so we hit up Mikey and Daryl and we're like, 
all right, let's just do it all together. So we just kind of all came together and uh, that's kind of how it started. Wow. That, that's really cool. I think the thing that's special about that timing was if you look at the space of the snowboard videos that were coming out at that time, you had like Mac Dog and you had Standard. Yeah, Tech Nine. Shouts to T Nine. Were we still doing? Maybe, oh, yeah. maybe Tech Nine was. They were on their way. Their way out things, yeah. a little bit, but and so the but what I was getting at is that these videos are like big names, polished, very very polished, like high production videos, and it seemed like Videograss came in and it was like the underdogs, the the dudes who you wanted to see, kind of like rough around the edges. What was the mentality on picking the riders and the whole video and all that shit? I think it was just based around like the style of of snowboarding that we liked that we wanted to see and and that we wanted to curate you know like that's all it was yeah it's just like people we wanted to film with yep that represent like damn that dude looks good on his snowboard we like like you know let's get him on the crew yeah. yeah i got a guest question from joe sexton i called him and you know he's basically let's give him an air horn let's get <laughs> <laughs> Joe needs a cup. Maybe, Maybe a gun another shot? one. Yeah, yeah, give him a give gunshot. Him a gunshot for <laughs> sure. Okay. One more gunshot. Okay, so Joe, he's basically a through and through VG fucking champion. Uh, but he said he had an interesting question because, you know, Videograss has given a lot of people their start, you could say. Uh, like you got, you know, Danimals is a prime example. And he was kind of asking, like, you know, the way a production company works is you normally get riders that have sponsor dollars. Their companies chip in for them to be in the movie. And then you're able to, you know, make this movie from their, the sponsor money from the riders. So when you take a new rider that has no sponsors, put them in the movie, you're not, it's like basically a gamble or a loss or like, how do you go through? What's your, what's your thought process on picking somebody like Danimals? That's like a relatively unknown rider and putting them on. Danimals came about from Riley Erickson kind of always had his ear to the ground in the Minneapolis scene. Riley was one of your filmers. Right? Yep. Yep. And uh, Riley was like, dude, like Dan's been coming out with us. He's been getting some shit. Like yep. I'm going to send you all this footage. But I mean, it was, it, VG was never about sponsor dollars. Like probably to our own, own detriment. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. If this dude fit and he had no funding, I mean, Jake O.E., Get Gus Engel, Laurent, like yeah. all these people that zero dollars. And those are the ones him. we all love. Yeah, but yeah. it's like, this dude's got to have a video part. You can't just, and, and to the brands that put money in, they're like, hey, well, th what's this guy doing in there for free? But it's like, he's making it a better he's video. He's making it, a, yeah, <laughs> like the guy, it fits, it helps you, trust yeah, me. Yeah, trust us. Yeah, yeah. A rising tide raises all boats kind of vibe is what you're right. saying. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And so Danimals, yeah, it was just kind of Riley- had him along on trips and uh, I guess not on trips, just kind of just around Minneapolis and sent me all this footage. And I was like, dude, that's like, that's like this is some of the heaviest footage from the season out of anyone in our crew. Like he's getting apart. Like we're going to put him in. Yeah. And uh, so I put him in, I'm, I think it was him and Jonas shared apart. Yep. I think. Right. I'm not sure. I think you're right. No, it is. It's, it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. On, no, no, you're right. It is. Yeah. And we didn't tell him. And I told, I told Riley only and Riley kept that a secret. Brought Dan. is like, hey, Dan, maybe you can come. We had a VG session, like a signature session at High Cascade. Yep. And Riley was like, hey, Dan, maybe you should just come out to the VG session. Like, just come on out. Come hang out with us. And little did Dan know, like, he didn't know he was even in the movie. And then that premiere at High Cascade is when he found out. And it was That's pretty cool. Sick. It was kind of cool, like, to now break it on him like that. Yeah. He does that legendary nose press back three in that part. Yeah. That dude. one. We should insert that for the video. You so got to insert it right it. here. <laughs> <laughs> insertion. I yeah. love inserting. Yeah, me too. Big fan. <laughs> um, dude, while we're talking about all this video stuff, I think we got to get into it. All right, dude. All right. We're going right. to do it. We kind of came up with something. Um, we'll get into this later in the show, but um, Justin Meyer is a X Games silver medalist because of he filmed Zach Hale's yeah, right. Real Snow. That's right. And if he gets the name that video part right, Stony Buds agreed to wear the medal for the rest of I the did. episode. So pray to God I get these right. And, um, pray to God all right, you we're, don't. We're gonna get into name that video part. You gotta Here get we go. three right. Yep. You know that's my voice. Yeah, I was right gonna there. say, is, is that it? Your voice? That's my voice. Oh yeah, Meyer also I made chopped that. and screwed that a little bit. Presented by the Do Tour. Shouts to the Do Tour. Do the appreciate. Do. Appreciate you guys. Um, so this is a three-parter. Since this guy's such an ace in the hole as for videos, we give him, he's got to go three for three. Okay, you ready? 
Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, let's okay, here we go. <laughs> Desiree, Laura, first VG. Come on, okay. you can't give me the Dude, own video. That, that's what's fucked <laughs> that's up. Cheating. Giving him his own video shit. That's like, <laughs> come on, man. In all Maybe fairness, I, I might have rigged this a little bit. In all fairness, I could easily miss any VG yeah. song because. Hey, isn't there a story about the chicken head song that was just played? There was. That was Desiree's yep. video so, part? I think I threw it in there as just a joke to like show Desiree just to fuck with her. Yeah. And uh, she was, she loved it. She was like, yeah, fuck. That's, and everyone else was laughing their ass off loving it. And like Desiree tried that year. We had her out. And I think it was just like kind of rough on her. Like, you know, being in an all guy crew and like these guys are doing crazy shit. And then Desiree's like, fuck, what am I going to do? You know, but she did her best. But she ended up, like, eating shit quite a bit, and it was kind of funny. And, and she didn't end up with a full part. And same with Laura. Like, Laura had a shot at it. And neither of them had a full part. And we're like, all right, let's, let's put it together and, like, make it lighthearted and, like, still put everything. Entertaining. Yeah, put everything they got in there, like, regardless of a make or not. Like, let's just do it. And uh, Desiree, lo- like, when Desiree saw that part, she was like, oh, it's funny. Yeah, you got to fucking do it. Go for it. And, and yeah, I don't know. But at, at- the premiere... At the premiere, I heard she cried. <laughs> what? She didn't like it? Yes. No, 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 no. Des told me that from her mouth. She said, I cried at the premiere when I heard that song. But but you got to listen why. Someone told me that, oh, like, you fucking asshole. Like, Desiree cried at the premiere because that fucking song. I was like, she knew well ahead that we were using that <laughs> song. She signed off on it. The reason she cried is because she wasn't happy with her footage. Oh, uh, I thought yeah, it was yeah. all about the song. No, 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 okay. no. She lo- I think for this, the, you for might want to ask her. Desiree, chime in. The hook Let's is bok bok chicken head, bok bok chicken head. So I could three you know, six mafia man. You can't the pat, the project pat, great yeah, song, yeah. great song. All right, this so he's one for one for three. Ready for go for Stone, two? That thing's looking pretty shiny, buddy. All right, Here's we're going for song thing, number man. two. Here we go. Dude, dude, another dude, I know all these. You don't know bro. these ones. Yeah, dude. Oh, you do? Okay, so right, let's see. Stone can get this one okay, before, this, this next the, one for me. Oh, no. Okay, this is three no, no. for three. <laughs> see, if, Buds, you go first. Here we go. If you don't get this, it's you're an yeah, asshole. Yeah, this is actually, you kind of have to Brad get shot. this. Oh, my I, I'll, God. That's your boy sitting right <laughs> here. That's Chris. <laughs> put, put it on him. Is it gold? It's no, it's, it's, you know, I, I didn't. I couldn't even tell what song that last it's song not was. Quite, it's not quite gold. That, it's not, so it's not quite gold. For those who don't know, that's actually my own video part. I selected <laughs> that like a complete what asshole. Video? I was kind of <laughs> hoping you would challenge me. You didn't even challenge oh, also, him, though, dog. Also, what we got here, Jesus, is a igloo cooler. Which video is it from? Bomb hole all over wrap that they gifted us with, filled with some goodies from bombhole.com. Bombhole.com. All right. Nice job. Thanks, boys. So, you know. 2020 right here? 2020? 2020. So, yeah. And then me, we, we, me and my boy, Zach Hale. Silver medalist? Silver medalist. Okay. So, we're going to finish off. Name that video part. We have the one for the listener viewers. A lot of fans are into this, buds, aren't they? Yeah. dude. What they, do they do? They just, I think they don't even watch our episode. They just go straight they, to name that video part. They scrub part. right to name that video part, and they're commenting five like, minutes after it drops. Yeah. All right, this is for the listeners. It's kind of a meatball. Here we go. Yep. All right. You know the drill. Thank you for playing Name That Video part. That's an amazing video part, by the way. We'll, we'll cut, cut that, that out. out. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I forgot we can't talk about who it is. Yeah. <laughs> so I just talked to uh, Lance, a founder of Ashbury Eyewear, good friend of yours, and he was kind of bringing up some interesting stuff. Lance about- Hacker. Yep. Can we get Lance Hacker? Uh, let's get him something. Lance, you get yourself an air horn. Um, but Lance yeah, Lan- Lance was talking about uh, the video part with Laurent with the famous quote at the beginning, I shit my pant. I did. I shit my pant. Yeah. And there was a funny story about how basically you told him, uh, explain, you want to explain that? Like you edited it and, and sent it to him without it in there, but it was actually in the movie. No, no, no. <laughs> I showed him the. it was in there in the beginning. He's like, no, f- dude, fucking take that shit out, man. Like. Fuck no, man. I can't have that shit in there. And uh, 
fucking it went in. <laughs> yeah. Even after he asked you yeah, to take yeah. it out. Yeah, and he's like at the prem- or afterwards, I think after the Quebec premiere, he's like, dude, my dad saw that shit, man. He thinks I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's Laurent. the one who said it. Yeah. Oh, Laurent, man. He's the shit. I love him. Um, this is something that I personally really want to get into. And it's what we call the change that vape debacle. Mm. I'm going to explain mm. it for the the layman's out there. Um, myself, Scotty Stevens, Bodie Merrill, we had a crew called Change That Tape. We made edits uh, similar to a modern day dust box, lick the cat, you could say, but yeah. kind of uh, years ago, you know. And, the, and um, at one point on the internet, there was a we had a troll. We had a troll situation. It was called Change That Vape. And it was an Instagram where they took photos of all of everybody we know, a lot of our friends, and there was a Photoshop vape coming out there. At one point, there was like Zach Hale's like girlfriend was like farting vape <laughs> smoke. It was incredible Photoshop. Jobs. Really good Photoshop work. And there was a two-year mystery where we couldn't figure out who was making change that vape. And they had thousands of followers. And, um, you know, lo and behold... Uh, it was the man sitting at the chair right next to me. <laughs> Guilty. How yeah. did you find out? So this, 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 first, we got to back it up a little bit before right. I'm going to give a little preface to this. At one point, I thought it was Justin Meyer. Scott Stevens thought it was Justin Meyer. Me and him were the two main detectives on the scene. Yeah. And, Detective um, Scroats. Detective yeah. Scroats, if you will. And at one point, Meyer had devised this plan. Do you want to explain this plan? Is this is John Stark? No, no, no. This is Which the one? no. This is the um <laughs> Amber. The Amber. Well, yeah. This is Stark. Okay, Stark. I think no, I don't know if it was when we were working no, on. No, no. Sitting. Scott was sitting next to you. Oh, this is the same. Oh, this sp- is this is the two part. I've used Amber twice as okay. an accomplice. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll start it with the John Stark one. I think it was when he was working on Half Off. Yeah. Maybe it might have. I don't know. I think it was around that time. Anyways, he was over at my house, and I knew he was going to be there for a while. I knew he was going to be checking his phone, checking Instagram. And we had already talked about this. Everyone's trying to figure it out. Like, who the fuck is this change that fate asshole? Like, who is this dickhead? And uh, Stark was over. I knew it. I knew it. So I made one. Had one all whipped up and left my phone in the other room with Amber. I was like, Amber, will you post this in like half hour? <laughs> so good. Just the Amber. She yeah. Was like, so she's like looking at this like, what? Oh, all right. Okay. I'll post this. Whatever. Sure. I go. So I'm in the other room. We're like editing or something or talking and I knew he's gonna be looking at his phone and she posted it and where he could clearly see that I didn't just yeah. post this you know and so he's looking and she's like oh my god they just posted another one like <laughs> got him he you was threw, convinced you threw him off the scent yeah, yeah. cause he, him off your scent like Stark he's like he's gotta know everything so it's killing him that he does not know who changed that vape is I knew he was gonna tell everybody dude I know for a fact it's not Meyer I know that it's not him I was there when it posted <laughs> and uh I basically reused that same technique on Scott. On Steven. And yeah. Scott had told me from his perspective, he's, like, he's like, dude, I went over Myers. Yeah. I was sitting right next to him and he had his phone on him and a change that vape post went up. I know for a fact it is not Myers. Innocent. And, and so instantly. He, he yeah. had, we had thrown Meyer, the guy who's right under our noses, who, you know, we're trying to solve the mystery of who is change that vape. The guy's with us half the time. You guys didn't and like it he, at first. He either, threw huh? us off a set. I'm going to tell him, I. I, there's times I didn't enjoy it. There's times I did. Stevens was losing sleep over this. He was. Shit. Yeah, he was like, and and at one point you you we called it getting vaped. You vaped yeah. like his wife. I think his you vaped, mom. His mom. There was some, dogs. There was some Scott, good ones. Scott yeah. was like, he vaped my mom. They've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> you vaped his mom. I got his mom. Yeah. We got to insert the pictures here so people know yeah. as we're yeah. talking. There about was them. good Photoshop work. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I got it was just so, bored. I think I was bored. Well, yeah. how did you let it loose? Who you were, like how they find you? Like the goose loose. Dude, I kept it secret for two years. The juice got didn't loose, tell though. a soul. The only person I told was Preston Strout. Only person I told didn't tell anyone else for like two years. And he kept your secret. Yeah. Oh yeah. I kept a secret for two years, and then I, I was like, I was just bored, and it was really dumb. And I was like, all right, this is like such a dumb joke, but I've kept it secret so long, I got to keep going. But I can't enjoy this all by myself. So I told Sexton, and. uh Maybe JP. I think I told JP. Someone told somebody. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, all right, well, we need to, like, come clean. We need to come up with a plan. And we're like, all right, well, we're going to get Scott. We'll tell Scott. We'll reveal it to Scott on the world. Like, to the world, we're going to reveal it with Scott there. And uh, so we were at uh, Woodward Copper, and it was his birthday. And they always treat us and take us to, like, this birthday dinner for uh-huh. Scott's birthday. 
and uh, we went. I went live with it, it with the live reveal, and like Scott's like looking at the phone, like what the fuck, like because it's me filming him. He's like, "You motherfucker!" <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. it's pretty good. But you like went live on there, yeah, like the live reveal, and, he there. and he's waiting, just fucking like, who is this asshole? And then it's like all of a sudden he sees himself on the camera. <laughs> That's pretty good. He wasn't even mad after two. He no, was just no, like, no. Yeah, I think this, you can't be mad at Mike. At one point, I had him convinced. I was like, dude, it's it's either Stark. Like, I was pinning it on Stark. I started I believing pinned, it was Stark. You told me it was Stark. Yeah, at probably. One point. I pinned it on Schubert at one point. I, was, I think you told hey, me there that was a too. rumor. The, there, there was a, he made up an anonymous college kid. The, I want a college intern or some shit, right? This is so Stark's DMing the account trying to find out anything he can. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm just going to feed him some, I'm going to send him on a goose chase. And so I like tried to paint it as like some kid that went to Plymouth or some shit, you know, like some East Coast kid that would want to roast Scott and Grenier, and, was, and he took it. So fucking full, full hook, so line, and sinker. Dude. He took it. We kind of breeze through video grass real quick, but you guys have made a shitload of videos. Uh, I think actually a baker's dozen to be exact, which Buds told me. <laughs> what is a baker's dozen? I believe that it's thirteen. That's correct. One, one for the baker. Oh, it's a dozen, but they they take then one they for make themselves. An extra one, yeah. Ah, that's they that's include that in the delivery though. The baker doesn't eat it, I don't think. Oh, really? I don't think so. Are you sure? That should it be fourteen then, so no, they get thirteen not. on the delivery. <laughs> I don't know. You'd have to look that up. <laughs> My wife bakes a lot. I should I should know this, but but so so over the course of those videos, it's it's pretty cool. You know, it seems like you've seen years where you're selling like a hundred thousand copies. Um, yep. No, we never saw that. Well, years where you're selling a, a <laughs> lot of copies. Yeah, yeah. Whether or not you saw it or not. Yeah. But they sold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and then really watching the kind of DVD, like, die, you know, um, yeah. to a degree. Like, what's the motivation to keep doing it even though it's not particularly lucrative, right? Yeah. I don't know. I think it's, it's just the joy of working on a project together with a group of your friends. Because, I mean, in the later years, it's like, I can't even afford to pay filmers. So I want to keep it alive. I'm like solo project and it sucks. It's not as fun, you know, but it's just the, the drive to keep it alive and keep doing it and create something that's anticipated. And whether the format is a DVD or iTunes download or, you know, fucking USB that we're trying to do now, like, like just having something physical that, can stand the test of time and live is like an archive, you know? And I think that's like create something for the snowboard community. That's like, this is a snapshot of this year. This is what people are into. This is what we're into. And like, here it is in a final product rather than like, Oh, here's our web series or here's a link. Cause that shit just gets so forgotten. It's just breeze that you know, when it's in the feed, it's just like, it's like Instagram is kind of, Instagram's kind of like, it's like a, like you're snacking all day long, right? Yep. And a video is like that Thanksgiving dinner. You know, you're sitting around waiting for, everyone's anticipating it. It's going to be a meal that it, you're going to consume with a group of people and you're going to remember it. And that's, that's what I want to create. That's, I don't, I, like the snacks are great, but like you got to create the meal first and then serve them leftovers, you know? That's incredible. I was listening to a podcast about, technology and yeah. he actually described Instagram is like a bowl of popcorn when it's on the yeah. table you just keep or a bowl of chips rather is what they said sure but when it's on the table you just keep eating it you keep eating it and you don't even really need to eat it you don't even like eating it you're just yeah. eating it because it's there but when you yeah. take it off the table you don't give a shit right and right and, and that kind of ties into exactly what you said well, kind of I think if you're thinking about snowboard videos the the Instagram being a snack you're not you're not going to be hungry all day long. You're never going to be hungry for it. You're just all, you're full all day long. Yeah, you've seen oh, it. And, yeah. and you're never going to subscribe to it and call yourself a snowboarder. Yep. You're never going to, like, identify with that as a culture of that's who you are and that's who you want to be. You're just going to, it's like kind of, you kind of care less about it, you know? And I think when you create something like a video that comes out in the fall or wherever it comes out, it's something that's been anticipated. And then it's like, you you kind of attach to it. It's just something that's anticipated that that as a group or as a culture, everyone's like, all right, this is going to drop. Like, this is coming out. These guys are working on something. I can't wait to see it. 
and then it lasts longer. And then maybe they go buy those snowboards. Maybe they go buy that outerwear. Maybe they, but if they're just sitting here, just scrolling through, you're just not going to create, like plant that seed and, and create that, like that draw or there's, desire. There's a whole ecosystem a, associated with it too, because you, you never premiere something on Instagram. You're never like, Oh, here's my big video part. And like, whereas like but you, people you, do, but well nowadays, yeah, now you, they do. but you do have like, what I'm saying is about a snowboard movie is the beautiful thing about it is that people come together for a premiere and they yeah. go and they all like, they, you know, they look forward to it and they all meet up. And I don't know if that's a thing with COVID or what's going to happen with that. Yeah. But still, hopefully <laughs> outdoor premieres is what happens. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But even, even not the premiere, even just like, it's like a group viewing and like if you can have a premiere that's dope like that makes a connection that lasts forever that's something special you know even aside from that like uh, a dvd how it used to draw kids together it's like maybe only one kid in the crew buys a dvd but they're all sitting together watching it in this group experience and it goes so much further than just a kid who's sitting on the toilet watches it on his iphone Mm -hmm. by himself like he's not going to share the experience with his friends and create that culture and carry it into a lifestyle that they grow together. And then they're, they're customers for life. You know, they're mm-hmm. buying snow. Like the other kid, he's just, he's, you know, maybe he doesn't get attached to it. Maybe he scrolls past snowboarding and then his next thing is like some kid on a scooter. Like he doesn't, he doesn't identify as a snowboarder as well. It's like as if he was with a group of his friends and they all sat down and enjoyed this thing together that they anticipated that made them Part of a culture. You talked about how dope it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, whose favorite part? You know, you're talking about tricks, and, like, it just kind of creates a, I don't know. Well, there's an interesting correlation there, too, because you have, if you film a clip on, you film a clip that day, you put it on Instagram, that's what you, instant gratification, right? You just, boom, you you, you get, whereas that prolonged gratification of a video part is, like, you film 25 of your best hardest tricks you did all year and you hold out and then people all come together and it's more, it's, it's got a little bit more gratification seeing that like final product as far as a video right. part. And, and, uh, I like to think of it like a song and an album too, yeah. right? Like if you're just spitting off like a couple chords and a couple lyrics, it's like cool. But when you put it all together in that one song, that one video part, then it's better. And when all those video parts come together like an album, then it's even better. You know, it's like everyone, everyone makes the next guy better. Like a solo project is not, I mean, sometimes they're good, but it's the album where everyone came together with their own take that made it dope, mm-hmm. that made it last. And, it, and there's also something that's to be said about snowboarding is a very individual sport. It's a very me, 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 especially Instagram. Look at me, look at my tricks. Yeah. Whereas yeah, yeah. when people come together for a group, group effort of a project it's that mentality if one guy gets a trick we all get a trick there's camaraderie there's like a whole deal that goes to it and not to be said i also think inversely instagram has also massively up to the progression of the sport because you know yeah. years ago we would wait for the movie to come out a new trick is invented yeah then you learn it now a new trick is invented two days later you see somebody on the other side yeah. of the world doing it and then all the kids that's just the norm you know so yeah like if you're also i think for progression as a rider if i think i see this in skateboarding a lot these kids are younger they're just consuming instagram on their phone all day long and they're just looking at tricks 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 instead of sitting down in front of them tv and watching two or three video parts literally for like 20 hours of the day they're just watching people do tricks so when they go they just become hyper upset like if you watch something all day tom brady watches footage of him at the football game not to go off course but like that's how you get better you know what i'm saying in the same way if you watch snowboarding and skating and ingest it all the time you're gonna get better so that's one of the positive things of instagram i would say yeah i guess i i think it's just the 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 problem with that is nobody really works together on Instagram. It's every man for himself, every brand for himself. Fuck the other guys, right? Mm-hmm. Like no brands are really coming together to push the same message. It's like well, they don't have to struggle with whole video part too. Like it's easy to get a clip. But that, yeah, that, that is there's something you can see within snowboard projects too. Is when people are just randomly thrown in there for sponsor dollars and there's no camaraderie. You can see that in the field of video, and especially, yeah. and also the thing I loved about filming for Videograss uh, for a few years was 
it's like the process is fun. It's like, it's kind of lighthearted. It's not taken too seriously. I remember particularly one trip we went to Omaha, Nebraska. I wanted to get up early and film and these guys would lock the door in between the room so they could sleep in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, yeah. Remember that trip? No, it wasn't just that trip. This Who, was Chris's move. Lock the door. <laughs> this was Chris's so move. We have double right, so we hotel get, room. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. We get two rooms next to each other with the door that connects. You know. Yeah. Chris, he he's just up early, get at it, and yeah. everyone else is like, "Oh, Joe, just chill out." Like, we better lock that fucking door. He's gonna be in here super early, and waking everyone up. And it wasn't just like I remember this was in uh, Cook City. No, can't we were nowhere. We were in Logan, and we got a hotel for the night, so we didn't have to drive back. Mm. You know, back and forth. And he's up at fucking 5 a.m., helmet on, walking into the room. We're like, oh, my God. And he's, like, kicking shit around. He's like, I'm ready, boys. He's already been to the gas station and all this shit. And everyone's like, we'll get there. We'll get there, man. We'll get Snowmobiling's there. tough. You got to get up early. Yeah. That's, the trick that's is, like, you got to bring him overseas, dude, and his clock's all fucked up. And then people like me are up at 5 he's or so, 6, it's, it's, and this guy's, like, can barely wake up. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know what's amazing about Buds, though, is that he doesn't sleep when he's here. He's like, a, this guy's a fucking night owl. So, And he no, always is habitually late <clears throat> to the spot in Utah. Habitually late. But you get the guy over in Europe, he's the first one up. He's like me. He's like, I'm ready to go, boys, because he's actually on his schedule. I already <laughs> dialed That's in. That's what I'm saying. He's going <laughs> to get him to Europe. He's in a permanent <laughs> state of jet lag. <laughs> When I'm here, mm-hmm. I'm jet lagged. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yo, shout out to my dentist uh, over at City Creek Dental. He's been listening to the Bommel, and he was talking about uh, his favorite thing about the whole Bommel was you with your dick out talking to a fucking <laughs> T-Bird. <laughs> He's like, he stoned with his dick hanging out of his shorts. It's so funny. <laughs> but do you know what I remember about that Om- Omaha trip? Uh, <clears throat> I remember taking a shit. Whoa. Um, I took a shit on Daryl's. I took a shit no, no. in a bag. What did you I do? You took a shit in a trash can, a hotel room trash can why'd you shit in a can for Dude. comedic value oh, okay. yes yes shits in a bag pissed in it too i think because it was like really com- soupy yeah. ties a knot in it and daryl was all fancy that year because he had like a travel budget and none of us had shit and so daryl gets his own room and uh, so Chris shits in this bag and goes and sets it on Daryl's front door, no, right in front of his dude. door, and knocks and runs. And Daryl comes out. He's like, "You motherfucker!" He, he picked me. it up and chased him with it. Yeah. He I think knew it's what like it was. It, Did he it's step in like on the it bonus right? of Shoot the Moon. I think. Did he step? Oh, that on was it? Bon Voyage. Oh, Bon Voyage. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Yeah, I took a shit on Daryl's porch, basically. That's yep. tight. You're supposed to light it on fire. Yep. You do the paper bag, light it on fire. I think we, th- I think that was the original plan, but it was a Probably plastic got bag. Arrested. Lighting a plastic bag would, would not be. So, yeah. so, so then they stomp it out. So and get shit yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Back to VG though. The yeah. one thing I loved about it was your ability to. I'm going to back this up. I'm going to okay. back this up yeah. actually. So I'm a personal personally. I'm a fucking nerd. I watch all the videos. I get them all, and you get all these videos, and sometimes you think this one's the best or that one's the best or it's the most polished as the most entertaining tricks. But then it comes down to rewatchability. And the thing I love about the video grass movies is like, you can keep rewatching them. I think cause the soundtrack and how they're edited. And you always find these moments of like Jaco E rolling his eyes or like these stupid little moments that like every other editor would skip over and put them in. Like what's your mentality to making this shit entertaining with those little funny moments? I don't know. I think it's just, I don't know. I see it. I see the clip when I'm going through all the footage and I'm like, oh my God, like, like what something about that moment is making me laugh right now. I'm putting that in. Like, I don't know if there's much thought into it other than that. You know, it's just like captures I'm, their personality. I'm digging through the footage like this is Jake. This yeah. is the, you know, and I kind of like see each video part as, as there, as that person, you know? So it's like, That's I want this video part to be that guy. Like almost down to the song. Like I, I kind of think like, you can almost picture that guy singing that song, you know? That's sick. You and it, that and it'll work better. Yeah. Well, I think that's what makes people so drawn in. If you look at a lot of other snowboard videos, it's just like well-polished filmed tricks and editing and music. And yours is like, this is the person. And I think people are drawn to personalities, right? Mm-hmm. So that's probably, you know, if I'm going Dr. Phil trying to psychoanalyze <laughs> yeah. why I like VGs, it's because the personality, I think, you know? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of the movies today or a lot of, you know, a lot of people, a lot of movies that people make, they're making it for, like, another editor or another filmer. It's like, you could, like, their motives are kind of like, I want this guy to be hyped on this. Like, I'm going to do this. And that's why we see so much of the same style regurgitated. It's like, 
a cop out. Like, oh, I'm gonna do exactly what Tanner did mm -hmm. because I know he's gonna like it. You know, <laughs> that's interesting. And I, I, I kind of want to do the opposite. Not that I want to do something that like Tanner's gonna hate. Like, I want Tanner to be hyped on what I do, but but uh, I'm not gonna try and like cater to a style or like. But 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 you know, occasionally you do. Like, we're, that's the thing with VG is there's so many people and so many different styles coming together. There's times where I'm like, all right. The way Durham filmed this, like I'm gonna try and edit it the way Durham saw that, you know. So I kind of, you kind of just have to adapt, like kind of keep a main focus, but also like take everyone's style into consideration, I guess. And a lot of times, filmers don't or editors don't do that, and maybe they do. And filmers get bummed, you know. Yeah, maybe they do, but I think a lot of it, I can see when someone's like, I was like, oh yeah, he's clearly just trying to fucking make Hayden happy. Yeah, or, you, know, you know, like, like yeah, the yeah, way yeah. it was filmed or. Yeah. So I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep things moving forward here. Um, you know, fast forward VG done a bunch of other stuff. And then let's talk about this resurrection of Jed Anderson part buzz cut and how that was a complete secret and nobody knew what was happening with that and that whole project. And you basically put that together, correct? Yeah. I, I mean, I think that was our goal was to try and keep a secret, but it's so hard. Um, so Evan, Lefever, shit, he needs an air horn. He had been trying to put Jed on Adidas forever, but he, like, his position in Adidas, it just, he didn't have, like, the ultimate power to say, go, he's on, you know? So I think he eventually got a promote, like, he'd been trying forever, and we had kind of talked about it, like, oh, how can we do it? How can we fig help him get him on, you know? And uh, Evan hits me up randomly. He's like, hey, I think I'm in a spot. This is when he tapped Wiz to be the next guy up, you know? And then Evan went up. And Evan's like, I think I'm in a spot where I can get Jed on this year. I think we can make it happen. Do you think he would snowboard? And it was like, it was so random. I was like, funny thing is, I got a text from Jed that morning that was like, hey, I don't know if you know anyone that I'm just trying to see if anyone needs like any graphic design work or whatever. I'm just trying to find some work within snowboarding. And uh, I think I replied to him. I was like, oh, I'll, try, I'll check around or something. But then I talked to Evan. And then I hit Jed back and I was like, do you want to snowboard again? And he's like, fuck yeah, I'm down. And then, I, and from there they took it, you know, but, um, and so Evan put him on, like just made it happen and Wiz made it happen. And between the three of us, we're like, let's keep it as secret as we can just between us three and, and Jed, obviously the four of us, let's keep it a secret as much as we can and try and, I think the, it was initially just one year we wanted yep. to try and do. And uh, it just, you know, you run into the trouble of like, all right, well, who are we going to get on a trip? Yeah. With Jed, that's not going to fucking run their mouth, you know? Oh, yeah. And you need fo photos, so mm -hmm. you need a photo talk, too, and, like... Whole secret operation. This guy's good at the secret operations. Yeah, Change dude. that vape. Yeah. Jed. Yeah. I, like, I like the element of surprise. Yeah. But, uh, so we were just trying to keep that secret, and it, it eventually got out, and I think it got out to the Vans dudes before it got out to some of the dudes even on Adidas' team. Oh, wow. So Wiz was like, fuck, like, I can't let them find out from... The Vans dudes, so yeah. I got all, you know, so, so I think he had to break it to those dudes first, yeah. And, yeah. or like after, and like, they and then the cat was kind of out at the bag, at least within the industry. But we're like, oh, let's just try and try and keep it secret yeah. to like kids, so it's still a surprise. So hopefully, you know? the viewers and, don't know. Yeah, and I'm gonna break this down because a lot of our listener viewers are a little bit disconnected as far as the intricacies of some of this stuff. So basically, Jed Anderson was is still one of the greatest snowboarders to ever do it, and he essentially retired kind of early due to sponsorship funding lagging. He basically like kind of walked away from snowboarding before he should have. And he was basically a, a kind of a ghost for a few years. And this was a resurgence of a lot of people's favorite snowboarders. So it, it really hit the scene hard when that shit came out. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if he got, if he walked away or if he was kind of, kind of cast aside, he kind of got shit on. And, um, you know, I think he, you know, he never wanted to not snowboard. It was not like he was completely over it. But at the point, like when you ask him about it, his perspective is, I'm not, you know, the level that I'm snowboarding or that I need to snowboard to progress on what I'd already did is like, I'm risking my life, really. Like, is it worth it for free? Like, so, and someone's going to benefit it from no matter what I'm riding. Like, he's not stupid. Yeah. And so, like, he wanted to get paid to do what he could do. 
And that's like, you know, people want to talk shit on that. Like, oh, jet, like some people As are talking. Should. Yeah, I remember some people seeing, are talking shit online. That online. Yeah. You're like, oh, welcome back, Jed. How it must be nice to like. And it's like, dude, like, yeah, you don't even understand this. like the level the dude was snowboarding at and what's expected of him. Like expecting it from a Jed comeback. Like he's, he's not just going to go do that just out of like. Here's a video part because I love snowboarding. Yeah. You know, it's like. Obviously, he loves snowboarding. That's what the fucking guy. He deserves does. to be paid for his. He's smart set, and he knows what he's worth. Yes, yeah. And well, I, going we can out tell. He's getting no- a street part is not the same as just having fun at the resort, anyways. You know, and right? Or you know, like, traveling costs money. Traveling yeah. and like doing a little board slide on a rail or whatever. You know, he's, like, he's doing shit that's doing like gnarly shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he knows his worth, and he's smart, and and uh, he's not. I, it's just, it was dope to see Adidas step up and and then ride follow through and. And uh, he's you know, got the support he needs. And, and the video part was insane. And uh, I think it's a great story. And yeah, that was, cool. a, that was yeah. a really cool thing. Like, as a snowboarder, I was just kind of like, we need more of this. I'm, know, I was right there with you the whole time. Like, like, don't fuck this up. Like, <laughs> don't fuck this up. But, you know, it's like we were limited on, you know, like some of the music we wanted to use. We had to change it, mm-hmm. like, with literally the, a day before it was due. Yeah. So we're like, yeah. fuck. But so, overall, I think it came out okay. I think it's cool. Have we been on? We've been on some trips together over the years, right? Us we, three. Yeah, we went together to Mass, as well. Mass, I know I've been on a million trips with both of you, but yeah, Massachusetts. But as a as a trio, I Boston. think Boston. Yeah, yep, Boston. That was a great trip. Um, it was kind of a wild trip for you, though, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was weird. It was my dad had committed suicide. He didn't two really days before that trip. Tell everybody. I think I think I only told you. Told me, but I was like, yeah, I don't know. It was just it's just like you just kind of go on the trip and. Yeah. Trips are therapeutic and fucking enjoy it and be with your friends and, and film. That was a Sometimes trip because that's all you can do when something yeah. like that happens, I guess. Yeah. And you never even told me that till, till, no. till today. Yeah. yeah I, and it's not something I would really talk about, but yeah, I mean, it's just kind of one of those things. It's like, I, I don't know. I was, I wasn't really super close with my dad. I grew up with him in the house, you know, but I was never really tight with him. So I kind of felt like it was a loss for sure but not something I recognize as harsh as a loss as it may be to someone who's had a dad who's there all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, it's crazy. You're able to go on a trip too and have people like him not even know. And yeah, because we still had a pretty amazing trip. Yeah. It was a good time. Yeah. Yeah, Scott got the cover, a bunch of clips for the movies. I think someone stole your dad's weed. Bradshaw was there. Jaco, you might have broken into your dad's weed sack. Yep, that did happen. I don't know if we can talk about that. My dad's going to see this, and he's going to be like, God damn, there was a bag in the freezer. (laughs) Yeah, that's... uh, We all know where the stash is, bud. (laughs) (laughs) But um, the other thing, I, I, uh, you know, talking about going, circling back to that stuff about your dad, you know, sounds like maybe wasn't, the best he could have been at times. And it's, it's sometimes funny how parents or whoever in your life can be great teachers in teaching you what not to do. Cause I see you as a dad so you seem and like you are like dad. dad of the fucking year, yeah. you know? Well, so how's, how's that fatherhood? I think feel? that's the thing with my dad is I never realized that he wasn't a great dad, you know, and becoming a father of my own. I'm like all these little things I'm doing and so much that I want to do and being a part of every day, every minute of their day is like, Damn, he fucking missed out. Like, yeah, he there's a up. lot he didn't do, mm-hmm. and and I didn't realize that until I became a dad myself. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know. I think that and, and learning from you know learning from other people's mistakes is kind of like the story of my life, right? Like I'm always watching someone else fuck up and learning not to do that. Basically, doing the opposite. Be like, like, don't do that. Don't do that. Like, yeah. And and I think anytime you can learn from someone else's mistakes, you dodge that bullet yourself. You yeah, know? that's huge. Uh, about that whole deal too. I was talking to Sexton. He was saying like, you know, it's like you got a family, you got a wife, two kids at home, and you're sitting there filming Joe at two in the morning hike like a down bar, and and like, how's that balance of like dad life versus like filming a bunch of dipshits like bungee into a down bar? <laughs> Dude, it's funny. It, it's it's all the same, really. Like you. Like being a dad or being a filmer on a trip is pretty fucking similar. Kind of be like being a dad. Yeah, you're kind Wrangling of dealing everyone. with these dipshits and <laughs> children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like herding cats, dude. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Not that my kids are dipshits, but the, yeah, you're. They're, they're, smart. they're pretty. They're, they're, they're pretty brilliant. Really, he's a yeah. smart little guy. Seems kid. like he's on he's on kid. his way. I have a joke that I dropped on Meyer a couple of times. His, his son's name's Mars. I told him he should name his second kid Uranus, but he didn't think it was very funny. <laughs> I don't think Coda would think that's pretty yeah, funny. I don't, but yeah, I don't think he would appreciate <laughs> yeah. that in school. That's tight, dude. 
Now, back in your VG days, you guys were always deep in the Midwest scene, which I think was pretty dope. Yeah, I, I think uh, just a lot of the crew is from, you know, is been from the Midwest. And I think the filmers. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. Like getting filmers in the Midwest because we have so many crew in the Midwest. It just yeah. makes sense. And like Riley Erickson and Sam Fenton. Those who are it, they're such rad guys. Oh, they're that the go shit. on these trips with these yeah. guys for the first time. Yeah, yeah. Like, Dude, VG is dope. And, uh, you know, just the way that they work with those guys and knowing that they can be on a trip and they're going to get it done and you don't have to worry about it. And I think, uh, you know, Midwest for us, for me personally, what I like about the Midwest is these kids aren't coming from like excess means. They're like a lot of just like working class kids. So they have good ethic. That's and so true. They're not spoiled little brats that you're filming with. And they get shit done like and they have a good time Vail resort or something. Yeah. It's not like some kid that grew up at Vail, you know, it's not like, or I mean, there's probably some good, really, really privileged kids that grew up at Vail that it turned that out cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. yeah there's but, a lot that aren't probably. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There, there's definitely a different vibe from a, like a giant expensive ski resort with like acres and acres and acres and $130 lift tickets than there are like a rope tow resort. It's just, you can't right. really, they're, they're clearly different. Yeah. I mean, it's a resort built on a pile of trash, basically. <laughs> yeah. It's like a like, trash hill. They are right? trash hills. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a different thing for sure. So, as you know, you know, Buds and I are both giant fans of fans. video grass and videos, snowboard video culture. Hence, we talk about it on the podcast all the time. But, you know, at one point you were with it where the money was flowing like the salmon of the Capistron, you could hmm. say. And that well is starting to dry up like a Sahara Desert. And what do you think like these brands need to do to keep make sure these videos don't die, like keep supporting them? What needs to happen in this industry, in your opinion, from somebody that's been in it for a minute? But yeah, I think that's it. That's just it, is they need to support it. And, uh, you know, not just VG, but anybody coming up, you know, any crew that's putting something out that is their focus, that is like their vision of, of the culture rather than trying to own it all. And I think that's kind of the problem, a problem, not the problem, because it obviously is, is effective with like Vans and, and Adidas and, and brands that do their own thing. But it is a problem when you can't let the voice be heard uncensored purely from that culture, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think it all come up is also come from social media. Like a lot of brands just don't know what to do. Yeah. They don't know what marketing is supposed to look like right now. And I think, I think a lot of that is, you know, marketing, like what used to work is still going to work, but you just maybe have to adapt it a little bit. And that's maybe I was talking earlier of like the anticipation of a project, then it comes out. And then you feed them bits and pieces for Instagram and whatnot to kind of sustain it rather than just that's all you're doing is just throwing stuff on Instagram or not really having a solid plan and not trusting the process, I think. True, true. It, I, I think it's hard for some brands because the Instagram model is so powerful. Like, for example, if a writer with a few hundred thousand followers does a swipe up on something, there's probably going to be a few thousand dollars worth of stuff sold on just that alone. You know? Sure. Yeah, sure. And I think you got to do both. Like I said, you have to adapt. Yep. But a writer who puts out an amazing video part is going to create a following of kids that aren't just Solomon that season. They're Solomon for life. Like that, you know, it's not necessarily that year's graphic that they might buy. They might buy it, you know, next year when they, when their parents let them have the money or, or when they've made enough money to buy that on their own. But what they, what you did by putting out that video part that means so much is you made them love it and love that brand. And it's, and it's almost like maybe brands could like, you look at skateboarding, like imagine if skateboard videos dropped, that were all based around that deck graphic. It'd be fucking weird. Cause they drop graphics like crazy, right? Like they're, they're more branded around the brand itself and the image of the brand and the crew and the riders or skaters or whatever that are on that brand. And that, and that I feel like could be the effort that is more important than like, we need to sell this graphic. We need to have shots of this guy on this graphic. Like, totally. Yeah. It's, it's almost like uh, we're as humans drawn to like tribalism. Like this is our tribe. So if you look at, you know, back in the day, like, you know, maybe let's take 
Ashbury or whatever or something like like you're certain certain groups of people that all fit together they're authentically friends like when I was a kid I watched the forum videos and like I wanted to be in the forum eight they looked like they traveled around the world together and they were friends and they were on this pedestal and then nowadays it's almost like well we need a, we need a woman contest rider and we need like and they just kind of like hand pick these random people and put them on a team but they don't have anything in common like it's kind of yeah. crazy well I think that was like the beauty of that era in the forum eight, it yeah. was like this unattainable there. What you didn't have that look into everyone's lives on the daily. Yep. You just had these, you're creating superstars, right? Like superheroes. Like these guys are unattainable. You can't get to their level. They're just like, and that made kids want to be that a lot more than like, Oh, this guy did some lame shit today. Like I did something cooler. <laughs> yeah. than that. Like this guy I, I, did some lame shit. Oh, today. cool. Cool. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Like, whatever <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah like Bodie Merrill I just watched him like a video of him like cut down a tree in his yard which uh, I'm interested in but like yeah, I'd like to see that in the forum eight you're not gonna see Jeremy Jones Dude, posting a video of I remember <laughs> in like okay true life came out with a DVD right yep after the VHS like when DVD kind of hit and true life redid it uh the DVD and they had like a cribs with Bjorn yeah and I was yeah. like holy shit this is fucking crazy like I can see like more than just the guy's video part. I get to see like how he lives. This is amazing. And it was, and it was cool. But then you look at it like Instagram, maybe it's too much of that. Yeah. You're now you're getting too much of it. Yeah. 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 But, but at the time, like little doses of that were fucking amazing. You know, people need a little bit of a mystery. Just the right. Yeah. Yeah. Just enough. Not too much. But then you look at the YouTubers that like, Vlog their whole life, and people seem and to love that. And people just too. devour it. Yeah. So, right. so what is the move? But yeah, those yeah, guys are corny as fuck. Vlog. Well, I think that's like that's just part of the adapting. We, no one really knows yeah, no one what's going to hit. Moving you can, target. You can get yeah. You can guess, but you have to stay. It's always changing. Stay nimble and 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 pay attention. Yeah. Yes, you know. And there's so much, and there's going to be new apps, and yeah. How do you? Keep and with up COVID, with the digital world is just getting bigger because yeah. you can't actually hang out. You know. That's what's crazy. And what does that do to people? What does that do to snowboarding? What does that do to the culture of snowboarding? Yeah, that's no bueno. No bueno. And maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I feel like maybe like we need, I, th I think we just all, if we all came together in the snowboarding community and said like, look, let's work together with, his, with each other as much as we can to kind of create a, a similar message of, what do we all want in the end? Whether no matter what brand you work at, you want to create people that snowboard that are snowboarders for life. Yeah, because you don't want more tourists or like more people that are just followers. Like you want to create people that are going to live it and breathe it, and buy. They have to have the new board every year, yeah. not just I'm fine having one board every three years. You know, and I think that's what we need more of. And there's got to be a way that everyone can come together to figure that out, to where it's like a a Kind of a, a group initiative, you know, like more people, more brands working together is better than, you know, a lot of them only care about their own sales and their own program and their own world. And it's not even that they intentionally only care about yeah, it, it's but just, it's just the nature of Instagram down, is yeah. we got to grow our followers and hopefully that translates to more sales. And yeah. I can give this, this list of stats and all this information to my higher up and show them the ROI on this and that. and and these numbers, but what you can't show them is what created a real passionate lifelong snowboarder. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you show them that? Like, Oh, this kid watched this video with five of his friends and they're hooked for life. Like you can't show that on a, on a stat sheet. Yeah. There's you no know? way to show I think that. that, I think also that comes from basically kind of juicing the culture of snowboarding itself. Because if you look at a lot of other things that are thriving a little bit better, like skateboarding is thriving seems right to now. Be thriving. It's from what I was told, like they people, companies are selling more boards than they ever have stuff like that. Um, and so I think a lot of that comes from skateboarding 365 in most places where you can do it year round. There's a culture around it. There's this, this thing that, you know, where a lot of snowboarders are like, you know, three months out of the year, they, they are kind of into snowboarding and they do their other thing. But I think like these premieres, like these movie premieres or these, these things where people can come together, uh, whether it's digitally or in person are important to, to keep that culture strong. Like I think some of the stuff torments doing is really cool. 
um, for the culture in yeah. some ways, you know, and, I, and, yeah. and strengthening the culture fun I and think. being inclusive. inclusive. And I think being inclusive. Yes. And snowboarding's all, I've always loved that about snowboarding is it's really inclusive. Like I can't think of a time in snowboarding that I was involved that someone was excluded based off of whatever they are, or whatever they look like, or like everyone's like, it's pretty in, damn inclusive as, as a culture, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, you know, so, something like what Torment is doing is letting kids maybe know that, hey, we, we got your back. Like, we're down. Like, as snowboarding, we're down. And that's cool. And I think, like, raising that voice is, like, something that needs to be done more often, for sure. I, and skateboarding, you know, like, there's, there's not the barrier of financially yeah. to get into it. Like, snowboarding costs a lot of money. A like, when I first started getting into snowboarding, I couldn't afford a snowboard. Like, my mom put it on her credit card, or I had to wax a bunch of snowboards at the snowboard shop to, like, get a snowboard that I could ride that year. And there's ways that kids can get into it that don't have a lot of money. But skateboarding is just so much easier. Like, skateboarding, you can ride a busted-ass skateboard with shitty chips all over it and, yep. like, skate that for a long time, you know, until mm -hmm. it snaps. Yeah. But snowboarding... You know, you have like your snowboard breaks. You can't ride that thing, or if it gets its chips all over it or whatever, the edge is dinged out. Like, and you need the clothing, or else you're yeah, freeze. outerwear you gets torn the, up. The lift ticket. Yep, if yep. You're like not boot, around. like boots breaking in and all that. Like you kind of have to stay. F Damn it, Stony over there. Your mountain's tipping, bud. That was my fault. <laughs> but yeah, like snowboarding. You know, you kind of. So make it more affordable to agree. Yeah, I don't if know how possible. you make it more affordable yeah, and keep it going. Like, it. like maybe, you know, places like the Rail Gardens or like these resorts in yeah. like the Midwest that it's just a rope tow. Like that stuff's great because it lets people practice the, the act of snowboarding at an affordable level. You, you know, it's also a cool thing that's happening in the like more big mountain areas is that people are just getting split boards and they're like, I don't need a season's pass. I can just romp to, I mean, aside from the massive initial purchase yeah, of a split board, pretty expensive. but once you have it for seasons, you can just cruise up yeah. the hill and you don't have to give these resorts, you know, $120 for a lift ticket. You can just power yourself up to the top. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about all that split boarding, but I think, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. You can get up there. It's very expensive to get in though. Like, I, I think it's becoming more, uh, less, kind of like mountain elitist snob. Yeah. But, yeah. Know, yeah. They might say the same for cool kids in the park though. Who knows? Yeah. I'm sure they do. You know, like all those powder, cool guys. Are powder fucking, yeah. It's all, it's all, they're just jealous. When the mountains closed <laughs> down though, there was still tons of people up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Split boarding was the only way to ride, you know, or fuck it. Just hike to the top. Rip Stone. Down. You ever split board? Yes. You have. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Everyone's split boarding now. Dog. No. Yeah. Stone split boarding. Dude, I got to see it. I've tried. You know what I tried before I split boarded was those mountain approach. Not a fan of those. No. Because <laughs> you got to have your board and the mountain yeah, approach too much and your camera equipment, and it's just a nightmare. But split boarding is pretty dope. We should make a little edit. Buds and Grand Diesel go fucking split boarding. Yes. I've tried it once. Not a fan? I didn't know you needed poles. No, you got to have the poles. <laughs> and I fucking, I was chilling. I was like talking shit in the parking lot. We were up in Alaska, and I was like, see you later, bitches. I'm like fucking cruising across the flat and as soon as we get to the steep i'm like all right no nah, i don't i don't know like what i had blown I past everybody i'm like I don't, they're all like on snowshoes and i'm like i don't know i don't know what to do now and I, oh and you were the only one on, yeah, yeah. on them so i was like ah i figured out i like zigzag up this yeah. thing but i couldn't turn at hop, the zigzag you can't do the hop turn yeah i don't know i've ne i've never worn this is the only time i've had skis on my feet in my yeah. life <laughs> And I'm like trying to do this, and I was falling over, and I don't remember who was there, but they were, time. they were laughing at me, and I was providing you know what's sick the, about poles, the comedy though? for the day. That's amazing. You know what's sick about poles though is is uh, you can point at stuff. I love I love when I'm you footboarding. Can point at <laughs> I love stuff. pointing around. Pointing. Oh, like, I mean, it's just like I kind of like the skiers get the, <laughs> they have these dope little poles they can point at all the show. Look at that mountain over there. <laughs> that's, that's the big advantage. That's yeah. the big advantage. I think the pointing at stuff's fun. As Holy soon as I get some shit. poles, I'm going to start pointing. Yeah, I'm going to try to think of that next time. <laughs> so are we going over the, there? We're from the east, though. Like, I'm sure you grew up skiing, right, Chris? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so for us, maybe it's not as big of a departure. Yeah. 
When our parents, like my parent, my dad had me on the ski slopes at like two. I think that Damn. like that was in like 1914. I think around. I think yeah, I think two it was two years old though. Yeah. Before electricity, just after the car, the the model <laughs> was, was, Model T came out. Yet. Was it a steam engine? Or yeah. was it? <laughs> but your your dad had you skiing, I imagine. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. So for us, maybe it's easy to you get the poles and yeah, you know. What to Growing do. up in Vegas, I mean, even snowboarding is like what is what the fuck yeah. is that? Like, True. There's a resort. Yeah, you've got one resort. There's there. a resort, and that resort is back in the day. It was what's it called? It's uh, Las Vegas Ski and Snowboard Resort is what I think it's called. Uh, it used to be called Lee Canyon. Yeah, when Lee I was a Canyon. kid, and uh, they never had a park when I was a kid. We would have like take rails or picnic tables up and hide them in the woods or something. And they had these two uh, wood chairlifts and the bunny hill, but now it's dope. It's like quad chairs. Yeah, and they got like a park. we went there through. We went through on a premiere tour, and we stopped through there, and I was like, "Holy shit!" It's like it's sick. It's so sick. Uh, there's yeah. a Such crew a of dudes from there that like, yeah, they comes to Salt Lake. They're sick. Uh, well, a lot of those dudes, like some of those dudes, are like legit from the old, like from when I was a kid. Yeah, like Lee Clan is what we used Tech to call Nine it. guys. Kind of, they're like, they're kind of like the Tech yeah. Nine yeah, vibe. Was, yeah, we had a heavy following over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, those guys kill it. That's so dope. I wanted to kind of pivot is a pivot. term me and Buds like to use. Pivot. Um, uh, the topic about your entrepreneurship with this brand, Death Lens, like kind of yeah. where it came from and what the idea spawned from and what it is, essentially. Explain what it is for the people that don't know. So Death Lens is like a, it's a fisheye that hooks onto a case for your iPhone. Or your, we make some Samsung models, but basically it started... From, I don't know, we had, I had started like a few brands, like starting Videograss and like just kind of learning how it works. And then we did like Kids No Distribution where we were distributing all the movies and like seeing how all that works and learning from all the mistakes made and whatever those, you know, I was like, I was at a point where I was like, I want to start something, but I don't want to start necessarily a snowboard brand. I want something that like is up my alley, you know, like filming snowboarding. I was like, oh. and, uh. And then it was just like, we need a fisheye for an iPhone. Like these phones are only getting better and we're only getting more addicted to them. And the content's only being more and more and more and more like Instagram. I was like, this is like, it's the perfect time to like start that. So I just kind of hit up uh, Nima because I had done so many things with Nima and Nima's like does all the sales side of things. And, and uh, I think within, within a, like, Five days went from the idea to we had the trademark and the website nice. and everything. It was like, all right, we're we're going. And then we started getting samples and I was kind of learning that process and like dealing with different fact like all the different factories we were checking out. And I started getting into like product development. Like some of these samples we were getting were real shitty with a lot of like chromatic aberration, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, well, we need to try different glass mixed with like polycarbonates like different elements mixed together that it's getting scientific yeah, dude. well i had to do my research to like learn all this and and figure out like what makes the clearest image and like within i think from the idea to the first like product that we were happy with that we wanted to come out with was probably like four or five months and then from there we would just just make it better make it better learn more and uh, just getting to the point to where we're like, all right, this is like now we have something we're pretty hyped on. Like the image looks dope. Like it looks like an old VX. And, That's sick. And we ran with that for a while. And then I was like, we start like, I want something that looks like the HVX. So we worked and like tweaked a bunch of things and finally got it to, to where it is now. And it's like, now we have the pro fisheye lens, which is more like an HVX. And then the fisheye, which is more like a VX, you know, so. You know what we got to talk about, though? We haven't talked much about the bisque, the cheddar biscuits. Yeah. And I remember when it first hit, there was, um, like, I remember the bisque, like, a few years serious. ago was, like, flowing like the Nile. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't say it was flowing like the Nile, but yeah, there was I was. There moments, a- though, right? There was moments I was able to buy a truck yeah. and redo my basement. That's the Nile. Bro. And yeah, uh, that's flowing uh, like the Nile. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, a new I truck- was able to save some money. Which I wish I did better, but, but I, and then came snowboarding mixed in with that. And I was like, I got to make a snowboard video this year. And I have like hardly any support from these brands. So I just was putting my own money into it. Like all this money I'd saved up, I was, I'm like, 
I'm putting my own money that I saved up from Deathlands into making VG movies. Deathlands and, was supporting VG. Yeah, and then it just got to the point where I was like, fuck, I got nothing left in my savings. And now, now i got to start <laughs> racking up the credit cards. Start back again. But yeah, and it's like... What about with the new iPhones having wide angles built in and shit? Well, the wide angle is shit. Yeah, don't, so get, anyway, Meyer, don't get Meyer started on that. I think it's shit. I'm just curious. Like, it's got it's this a, weird distortion, and yeah. it's like... Yeah, I mean, you put, like, you'll see the difference if you put on, like, a real... Oh, really? The skate yeah, clips yeah. look sick on the death ones. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. filming, it's super. So cool. that it doesn't compare. It doesn't compare. No. Dog shit. That that speaks to your character, bro. The fact that you were able to, like, you were you care so much about making these snowboard videos that you're taking your hard earned save money and just basically putting it in a, like, just just putting it all <laughs> into this movie that's not going to get a good ROI per se, but it's important for the culture. I think it speaks more to Amber's character for letting me do that. <laughs> True. Yeah. True. Yeah. Amber again. Yeah. I, Heavy. I'm not the smartest with money, so I I was just like, yeah, yeah I got to do this. Like, I can't just stop making snowboard movies. Yeah. I'm gonna keep doing it. And, and she I, was down. And she's like, all right. Like, it, like she's kind of always trusted that whatever dumb idea I take off with is gonna like yeah. pan out. And you've had a lot of successful things, so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, luckily, uh, some things have worked out. Yeah. And uh, I think. That's just with anything. If you just, if you focus on where you want to go and what you want to do, like it's going to work out either well or okay, or maybe great. Yeah. But I don't think it, like I haven't really come where it just doesn't work out at all. Like complete failure is kind of, it's, it's a possibility, but if you're focused enough to want to do something. Yeah. You can get it going. I think you're going to make, you're going to find a way to make it happen. And, yeah. and I think that's kind of like what I'm trying to do with VG is, keep it alive and keep, I don't know, keep, keep making it going. Movies. Yeah. Love dude, it, I dude. mean, I want to see these movies keep, keep coming out. So I think also I see that you have a degree of extreme DIY to you to the point where you're like, no matter what you see anybody do anything, whether it's like building something at your house, like renovating your basement, yeah. <laughs> even though you have no skill set in it, you're like, I'll figure it out. And I yeah. feel like that's kind of the mentality behind the movies. You're just like an editing, like you probably never took a school for no. editing in your life. You yeah, know? no, I just self-taught all yeah. the way. Like I, th I think if like, that's just kind of my way of like, I like to bug out on something and like this kind of therapy of just focus on something and, and just do it and Dial figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, with anything like learning how to film or edit or product development or running a brand, it's just like, just figure it out. Just do it. And, and like, you don't, I don't know if school is, I don't know if it was right for me, but it, it wasn't. I don't know. Like, it, maybe it is for other people. Like, maybe that's the clearer way Did to Did you go there. to college at all? I went to college for like a year and then I dropped out. Mm. I had that Bill Gates Millennium Scholarship. Yeah. Went to UNLV. Did you really? Oh, yeah. wow. Sick. Bill Gates hooked it up with a year at UNLV. And then. How uh, do you get that? Dude, I don't. It came out the year I graduated high school. Like, Bill Gates was just like. Paying for college for people. Paying people to go to I didn't even know. Like, I was like, Millennium Scholarship. <laughs> All right. I went. That's awesome. Yeah. But I well, dropped out. But you dropped out. A lot of people with businesses and stuff, they're like, well, I, I don't have a business degree. I don't know how to start this company or like, I don't know how to get into production. I don't have any skill set. And like, I like everything you need is out there now on YouTube. Like, how do I edit on Adobe or some shit? You just fucking type it in and somebody's like, well, today I'm going to show you how to uh, yeah. render this clip. And you you're like, figure <laughs> everything out. I almost like the, uh, the opposite, like, yeah. a, like learning how to edit. There was no YouTube and you just make mistakes and learn. Yeah. But now, now it's like all like, oh, I want to, uh, I want to build a chicken coop in my backyard. I'm looking it up on YouTube, and I'm like, ah, like it's just so much conflicting information. I was like, I just want to do it, and if I fuck up, then I'll figure out how to fix it. You know, <laughs> it's nice. So you didn't use the YouTube. I did a little bit yeah. as far as like, all right, how big does the nesting box need to be? Or the what? Chicken, you know? It's a chicken mansion, dude. This thing <laughs> is, is sick. Yeah. It's like <laughs> reclaimed wood on the side. These chickens are living good. My chickens are living. We should post a picture in the video, yeah, right? So people can see this serious coop. chicken living. I have too many, too many interests and hobbies that kind of gardening, chicken, yeah, gardening, fishing. My garden sucks this year. Does it? Yeah. He's terrible. got some record, like what are they? Potatoes or some shit? I was trying to grow giant pumpkins. Forever. Oh, pumpkins. Yeah. Did you get some record breakers? No, not definitely not. Uh, but I got some that were big. But then I don't know. I started just ran into too many problems. Yeah, it's a hard hard game. <laughs> yeah, and you gotta have the yard for it. I don't have like this massive yard to grow. Yeah, these giant, so you know. need like I'm acres. like in a little raised bed. You're not growing a giant. Pumpkin yeah. In. 
So you got like one giant pumpkin growing? Not right now. No, I gave up on pumpkins. But you had. I'm going. Had go- I'm going gourds these years. Gourds. Yeah, gourds are fun. Harrison Gord or what? Harrison, are we Harrison Gordon. Gordon. <laughs> uh, man, so we're we're almost there, man. I feel like we we've, we've been chatting about a lot of stuff. Meyer, man, I think we had a pretty damn good conversation, man. What do you think? Yeah, I had a good time. Thanks. Thanks for uh, having me. Any other topics you want to cover before we sign off? I've been looking at this this uh, DVS Stony Bud shoe. Oh, dude, number one. I want to hear more about Zoomies, this thing. Dog. The number one leave. seller DVS one at seller, Zoomies. Dog. Is it still Zoomies. all five hundred doors or how many? Yeah, what are we talking? Waterproof. This is. Uh, is it still available for sale? No. <laughs> is this. Uh, <laughs> It was like 2000, I want to say 2004. Was it, is this some dead stock you're holding on to? I or? thought that was from uh, the 1400s, actually. <laughs> this is, Stan actually posted this online last night. He found it in the magazine. It got mad coverage that year. Probably got more exposure than Grenier did that year. Wow. Well, this honest. was during the time they invented the steam engine, correct? Or It kind of it kind of looks like a D3. It, it's very reminiscent this, of a D3. Yeah, this was the style. For the listeners, there's a lot of uh, puffy fabric associated with this shoe. It's got this one. It's got an absinthe logo on it's it. It's got to keep you warm. Does it got an absinthe logo on the tongue? No, that's the sh- like international logo for the sh- camera shutter. Oh, wow. I don't know, man. That's what the shutter looks like. Okay, okay. Hey, do you remember those D3 stomp videos from back in the day? <laughs> Shout out to Rubes on the D3 we'll little, stomp. I've never seen those videos, man. Yeah, basically they take a puffy shoe and they kind of they kind of squish something with it. Like a... Grab one of them donuts. Oh my! I got. I actually have one. I actually have a donut right here. Um, oh jeez! We're gonna get the Stony Bud stuff. For for those who are familiar, we'll link in the bio what a what a uh, D three stomp really looks like. But they kind of what they do is they take the shoe. They're normally wearing it. I'm holding it, and they kind of they lightly touch the object that they're stomping. They make you want the squish. Yeah, they they give you like a little like it's they like tease you like they tease it like that, and then they kind of climactically. It ends yep. with a stomp. <laughs> and then squish. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Really fucking. Oh, my yep. God, dude. That's the Stony Bud Stomp. Stony Bud Stomp. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much All for right. watching. We Woo! will see you next week over and out from the bomb hole. <laughs>